Well, thank you so much, everybody, for being here this morning. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about something that's you know dear, near and dear to my heart, and that is success in 2021. Uh, I don't like to leave things <clears throat> to chance when it comes to many aspects of my life. And so, therefore, I try to remove as many of the barriers, if you would, that potentially might pop up in making 2021 a good year. You know, there, there's, life is too short to have bad years, but I will tell you that if you follow some of the principles that I'm going to share with you, there's no reason why 2021 cannot be your best year ever. And I really hope that you take this to heart because this is something you should share with your team, uh, with anybody in your life that you want to be a part of your journey and help them get from where they are to where they want to be as well. So this is not about being selfish. This is about sharing this with as many people as possible, empowering as many people as possible to, again, making sure that when it comes to 2021, you don't leave anything to chance. There's a lot of dangers, just so you know, <clears throat> in 2021 in the world of accomplishing your goals. And one of them is that we're carrying over baggage, not us as individuals, but as a society, as the world from 2020, primarily the pandemic is what I'm referring to. So you gotta, uh, you have to know that we know enough about COVID to not let it control your life. And most importantly, use it as an excuse to interfere with your 2021. So don't buy into the hysteria, don't buy into anything. Make sure that you understand that again, this is a brand new year and we're going to accomplish big things collectively and as individuals. And so I hope that you know exactly where you are right now and most importantly, where you will be by the time this year ends as well. Now, as always, we're gonna start with a, a first, first things first type of thing. And the first thing I'm going to talk to you about is that I'm going to show you at the end how to get your hands on what you see on the screen. It's a daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly planner, goal planner for 2021, where you can plan, dream, and make it happen. And so this is very important for everybody, but especially for those of us that are in business, because while you can apply this for you know to any aspect of your life, <clears throat> your health, your relationships, and so on, I'm going to focus on, on this webinar, at least, to business, even though you should you should definitely be uh, setting plans and goals for all of the aspects in your life that matter. And so I hope that you take this to heart. Uh, you're going to receive this free. You're going to receive this in PDF format. What that means is you can print out as many of whatever pages you might need. I have one for my health. I have one for my relationships. I have one for, and then I break it down from there. Whether it be relationships, there's obviously my relationship with my God, uh, my relationship with uh, my wife. I got my relationship with my kids, relationship with my grandkids, and I ball them up into relationships, of course, including my mom. And so therefore, it doesn't mean you are overwhelmed by any one thing. You just got to make sure that there are things you have to keep an eye out. Uh, I'm actually fumbling around a little bit because I just placed an order. My mom is a, a little of the weather, and so I'm sending her her Uber Eats breakfast right now. And so forgive me if in the middle of this workshop, I have to meet you. That means I have to call her and tell her that the driver's there with her food. So we, we have to jug, uh, you know, juggle it. That's just the way life works. And uh, a good leader, somebody that understands that it's not about being at peace all the time with nothing to do, uh, but rather if you got to you know, go out there and juggle two, three, four things or spin 10 dishes, just get good at it. That's really what this is all about. So it can be done. It's just a matter of having the desire to do just that. So let me go ahead and uh, minimize this right here so I can focus on you. And I want to start with the obvious and the obvious is, you know, happy new year. 2021 is here. I'm looking to make this the best year of my life. I hope you're looking to do the same thing as well. Thank you for all the happy birthday wishes. <clears throat> as you know, or probably don't know, uh, my birthday is on January 1st. So a lot of people, once they know it, they never forget it. New Year's Day, it's also my birthday. So it's pretty cool to uh, have a double holiday, if you would, in regards to that. So welcome to 2021. And we're off to the races. Uh, they hope this is not the time for you to sit there and start planning stuff. This is the time to execute. But if you haven't been planning, well, then hurry up and plan uh, within the next couple of uh, days and catch up to the rest of us that are out there trying to make this our best year yet. So the question is always the same. You know, Do you know what you really, 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 really want? Most people have no clue what they want. They want, quote, money. <clears throat> they want success or they want this or they want that. But that's not really what you need to focus on. You know, if you haven't done so, you need to go ahead and do some soul searching and reflection. I mean, what do you really, really want? Because when most people just say something that would be nice to have more money, more this, more that, the reality is that for most people, it's not going to happen for them. I mean, New Year's, New Year's uh, resolutions, as you know, don't work. 90 something percent fail within the first two weeks and the rest die a few weeks after that. And so it really starts with something that you really, really want 
And it doesn't have to revolve around just the money. Now, the money is a means to, to an end, if you would, and that's definitely true. That's one of the things that's way at the top of my list this year is uh, to dramatically increase my income. And I've got a roadmap to make that happen coming from multiple angles. And so I know it's going to happen as long as I execute on my end. Uh, but <clears throat> it's not really the money that I'm after as much as I am the fact that we're putting the final touches on our working years, if you would. You know, I love what I do, but I don't love it that much to the point that I want to do this much older. Uh, I turned 49 this year. Uh, next year, I turned the big 5050. And so therefore, for me, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not going to go much beyond that as far as working. And so therefore, we must continue to stash the cash, uh, increase our investments, <clears throat> and a lot of other things that I do in my personal life to make sure that once we go ahead and uh, separate, if you would, or retire, or whatever you want to call it, uh, I never wanted to be one of those people that retires uh, for two years and then dies of old age. I don't want to do that. Uh, I'm very glad that you know, I have my kids, my grandkids, and you know, right now we, have, we already have a few things planned for this year, uh, which is 2021. February for Valentine's Day, we're going to Kabul. March for Marcella's birthday, we're going to Hawaii. April, we're supposed to go somewhere, of course, with Dream Destination with the company. Uh, in August, we're going to Israel as part of a campaign that we're going to film to make a part of the church fundraising campaign. So we're going to be going to Israel. Uh, and so therefore, I mean, we, we got a lot of stuff planned for 2021. And so therefore, like I said, as much as I love what I do, I'm already looking at my exit. And so I want to make sure that we are, you know, funded properly to last as a, a long, hopefully a long life after we do that as well. So what do you really want? I mean, another emphasis that I want to continue to do this year, which we didn't do as much last year, which on the giving back, we donated a lot of a lot of things, food, this, that, cash, certificates, uh, you, know, you name it. But uh, I really want to go ahead and, you know, fire that up on a larger scale in 2021, a lot of uncertainty in 2020. So, I mean, what do you really want? And, and ultimately, when you ask yourself, what do you want? It should tie into what fulfills you because money will not fulfill you just so you know for me it just doesn't do that but i will tell you that the trips that we plan like i told you in march we're going i'm um, february i'm going with uh, marcella on valentine's day to cabo it's just me and her because i really want to make sure that we stay tight we stay close to each other just you know and, and so on and so on march we're going to hawaii for her birthday but we're bringing our oldest granddaughter the three-year-old you know, she's been talking about Hawaii because we've been telling her how beautiful it is. And so, but again, whether it be Cabo, whether it be, you know, Hawaii, it's not about bragging or anything like that, but it's a different world. It's a different mindset when I'm there with especially Marcella and my granddaughter who's never been there and so on and so on. Right? I kind of relive the years when we used to go with my kids. And so that fulfills me. That's, that's what keeps me focused. That's what keeps me moving forward when many times you're just like, man, I just don't want to deal with this crap. And so again, the question that I have for you, you know, what floats your boat? What floats your soul? What fulfills you? And so you have to answer that because if you don't know how to answer that or your answer is just superficial, you're not going to make it very, very simple. 2021 will end up looking a hell of a lot like 2020, which looked a lot like 2019 and so on and so on. And so I'm just asking you to please reflect, go somewhere, go to the park, go to the beach, go to your backyard or something and ask yourself, what fulfills you? Have you ever asked yourself that question? And don't sacrifice your, yourself and your fulfillment, fulfillment for somebody else's sake. Don't do that. It has to start and end with you because we need you in the game. We need you to succeed. And so the question is, what fulfills you? And it's very difficult, especially if you have a significant other, a spouse, uh, if you have anything like that, it can be very difficult to do just that. And so my question to you is what fulfills you? We're not going to do a question and answer session here, but this part, I'm going to make an exception because I want to know what fulfills you, anybody, real quick, please. We don't have time to mess around today. So if you're going to say something, say it quick, please, anybody, unmute yourself. I think for me, Javier, it's generally, I love to be able to help people um, and, and give, I think that's uh, pretty much what I was put on earth for is to help others. Perfect. Thank you. And you know, and it's very frustrating because I've been, and I'm not saying you, I'm saying myself, I've been in position many a times where as much as I wanted to help and I saw people around me that needed help, I couldn't help them. And so going back to things like success and income and business, that for me, it's very, very important because I found it very difficult to help others when I need to help myself. And so that's why I go out of my way to make sure that I'm in the position to be able to do that. Because like you, uh, I think we're kindred souls. I've told you that a, min a million times before. Uh, we're givers. And I think that we reach our power 
when we are mostly fulfilled by doing things like that. Thank you, Kathy. One more person. Anybody else? What, what floats your boat, your soul? Anybody? Or you, maybe you don't know. Oh, my kids. And making sure my kids are, are happy, fulfilled, and they've accomplished uh, what they need to do to be on the path for their future. Perfect. Okay. And, and as much as I hate to say this, you know this, and we all know this, that money isn't everything, but it ranks up there with oxygen. And it determines so much because I never wanted the guilt knowing that I basically, uh, for the lack of a better phrase, ended up with my kids ended up with, let's just say, student debt and, and all kinds of stuff, just because I never saved for them uh, for, or for their college. I never wanted that on my conscience. I know a lot of friends that have that and it kills them. And so, you know, my deal with my kids were, look, listen, you do what you need to do with school. Keep your head on your shoulders. And I promise you, I will back you uh, up until whatever you want to become, I'll pay for it. Whatever it be a doctor or whether it be whatever, I guarantee you. And some kids took me all the way and some did not. But, hey, I feel good because at the end of the day, I kept my side of the bargain. So that's very important to be able to do that uh, as well. You know, I, I had a car when my, one of my first cars was a car I had to start with the screwdriver. And I never wanted that for my kids. You know, I literally had to start it with the screwdriver every time. I had no key. It was a damn screwdriver. And so I never wanted my kids to do that. So I wanted them to have a reliable car. They're not that they are, uh, are weak, but they're girls, if you would. And so they were never really worn to cars. They were not going to be starting cars with screwdrivers and stuff like that. So I wanted to be in a position where I could get them a new car and make sure that they avoided some of the hardships that one had to go through, if you would, growing up. So things like that. Uh, my mom means a lot to me. She floats my soul a lot. She took care of me for a long time. So, you know, I need, I need to take care of her uh, in her, you know, as we say in Spanish, they say to that, which is the third age. You know, you got the first age when you're a kid, the second one when you're an adult. And then what we call seniors, they call it the third age, if you would. You know, she's, she's at that part of her life. I don't want her to need anything. I don't want her to not have the medicines that she needs or the care or whatever. And so that flipped my book. So, okay, cool. We're going to get into this because we're going to fly through this because this is something you're going to either A, replay on Facebook, YouTube, or B, just you're going to have the material to read at your leisure as well. Now, we're going to focus on primarily the SMART goals. And I know you've heard this before. And if not, I'm going to go over them real, real quick. Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely, or sometimes tangible. I like the timely ones better. And I'll tell you why in just one second as well. A specific goal means specifically how uh, a specific goal has a much greater chance of being accomplished than a general goal. So if I was to tell you, I want to make more money this year, you know, what the hell does that mean, right? But if I tell you, I want to break $150,000 this year, well, that covers a lot of things. That covers the 75K club, the Champions Club, that covers a lot of different things. And if you do that, I guarantee you, you're going to be going on our dream destination in 2022. So get something specific or if it's going to be opening up of schools, uh, opening up of virtual accounts, opening up of virtual appointments. I mean, something specific, specific is what you're going to go after, if you would. So you want to make sure that you're in a position to do just that. So hold on. I think that's Uber Eats. If my mom's going to my mom's. Okay, well, they're on their way. That's good. And so, like I said, so a specific goal has a much greater chance of being accomplished than a general one. So don't stay away from, I want to lose weight. Uh, what the hell does that mean? You lose an ounce. Is that going to be okay? Is that uh, good? Uh, you want to do something specific. And again, you can apply this towards Marcella. Call her. And so you can go ahead and apply this to any aspect of your life, literally. And that's why I love to print out. If, if you saw my desk right now, you would be like, damn, that's a mess. And it is a mess because I've got so many goals that even if I hit half of them, which I'll hit more, but even if I hit just half, man, 2022 is going to be the best year of, uh, 2021 is going to be the best year of my life. And so be very specific, but you can have as many as you want, as long as you're very, very specific. A general goal would be implement common core, whatever. We're not going to get into that. Uh, creating a, uh, creating measurable goals. This is very, very, very important, especially in FFS, because in FFS, we can measure our income very quickly, our production, our recruiting, and so on. Uh, one of the things that has held me back from increasing my income in FFS has been that fact that I've got very good people on my team direct to me that are doing good. Some have fallen off. But I really have a broad, fresh blood. And so in this type of business, once you max out your generational overrides and your you know, direct overrides and so on, there's really not a whole lot to do. You're going to have to. You're going to have to go out there and bring new people. You want more income? You're going to have to bring more people because you cannot just simply demote your current directs just to you make more money. No, no. We want the people that do the bulk of the work to keep the bulk of the money. Go get more people. So recruiting can be something you can measure, production, and so on. 
creating, uh, let me just back up here, creating attainable goals. Now attainable is very important. And I'm gonna show you how I do this in FFS. Attainable does not mean that you have to necessarily believe you can accomplish it, but you have to be realistic. It's something that's attainable. If I was to tell you, I wanna go recruit 10 new directs in 2021, that's very, very attainable. If I was to tell you, I'm gonna go out there and recruit 10,000 directs, just tell me 10, I mean, of course, that's not going to be attainable and you're going to set yourself up for failure, disappointment, and you don't want to do that. Uh, creating attainable goals is pretty simple. Some things that, that can be done because you've done it or most importantly, other people are doing it right now. Uh, creating realistic goals, be realistic. A goal must represent an objective towards which you are both willing and able to do. So some of you have come a long way with technology and that's what I'm going to harp on a little bit. Some of you have come a long way. You're emailing now, you're opening, you're setting up appointments with people you've never met, which is pretty cool to see people do that. We've got people doing podcasts. And so you can do anything you are willing and able to work at, but a lot of the times we need it, but we're not willing to do the work. We're just not able to do the work for whatever reason. So don't set yourself up for failure in that sense, if you would. And then my favorite is timely. A goal should be granted within a time frame. With no time frame tied to it, there's no sense of urgency. So never go beyond the month. Ask yourself, how serious am I about making these goals things work for me? And I will tell you, put yourself to the test right out of the gate. Because if you don't set some goals up in January or January comes and goes and you achieve nothing, or at least try to achieve something, then you're setting yourself up for a bad year to stop. Just stop because you're going to end up beating yourself up. Nothing is more dangerous than you setting goals that you just simply don't work for and then finding yourself upset at yourself for not hitting those goals. You can't do that. It's not fair to yourself. And so timely goals are important because we can break it down to days, uh, hours, and I'll show you how you, to do that with the actual uh, planner I'm gonna give you today. And the last one can also stand for tangible, something you can measure, something you can feel, something you can count. So if I say, I wanna increase my business, my FFS business in 2021, well, that's great. But how are we going to know if it's taking place or not? Well, easy. There are tangible ways to do it, to see whether your recruiting numbers are going up or are they going down? Your production, are they going up or down? Points, are they up or are they down? And the numbers don't lie. I'll tell you that right now. So that's why you wanna make sure you do something like that that's tangible. A goal is tangible when you can experience it with one of the senses, that is you can taste it, touch it, smell, sight, or hear. When your goal is tangible, you have a better chance of making it specific and measurable and thus attainable in the process as well. So that's the way we look at SMART goals. So make sure you are looking at them and putting your goals that fit this criteria right now. Let me show you how we do that here at FFS. This is December. So the three main things here at FFS are points, uh, also applications, because they will turn into points if you close them, and then recruiting as well. And then the fourth one that I'm not going to cover right now is income, because you all know how to check your income on a weekly basis. Tuesdays and Fridays is when we get paid. Fridays usually suck and they're just small little checks uh, just because we get paid the bulk of our money on Tuesdays. But anyways, I'm looking at December 2020. If I want to increase my points, because by increasing my points, I'm automatically increasing my income. I'm increasing my chances of going to dream destination. I'm increasing my uh, promotion possibilities and many other things that are tied to points. Now, very simple. I just went this morning into the FFS website, the leaders board, and clicked up and looked up December 2020 and found that points wise, the number one personal producer in the company was Victoria Lee. She had 165,000 points. Now, if you look down at number 16, that person had 20,000. So the point that I'm making here is, again, once you make a statement to yourself of what you're going to shoot for, when it'd be points wise, well, what, look what's doable. You can go from 20,000 to 165,000. Now, if I said that I was going to shoot for January 2021 to have a million points, that's very unrealistic unless you had one hell of a December. Uh, now, if you do uh, did have that, well then bless your heart, the more power to you, and the more power uh, to you, but as it relates to what I'm focusing on here for you, points is a great way to do it. The second way, as you can see here, recruits. Very, very important. If you want to grow your business, eventually you're going to have to increase your recruiting as well. And so again, December 2020, if you look at the top personal recruiter, a tough month for recruiting because of the, not just COVID, but also because of the, uh, you know, everything that's going on uh, with the holidays, eight personal, eight personal recruits, number 16 had three. I mean, 
if you just throw two recruits at it a month, you're going to have a hell of a 2021. So measure it in this sense. And then app count, application count. When it comes to production, when it comes to the points, the apps, any of this stuff, recruiting, always ask yourself, what's your CBE, which is your career best effort? For some, it might be a zero, a one, a two. That's fine. Because in order to have your new career best effort, if you have two, we'll make it three. Whatever the number, whatever the case might be. So as you can see here, application count, the top personal producer, uh, number one, had 30 applications. And number 16 had 10. So again, if you're going to reach for anything, reach for the stars, stretch yourself, go beyond out of your comfort zone, you're more likely to achieve this as well. And here's what I want to just leave you with as it relates to the actual planner. Now, the planner itself is what you see here before you. It's in the form of a PDF file. Now, I encourage you to go backwards, meaning that I start at the end and work myself towards the front, or you can do it however you want. But what you'll see here is this is going from front to back, which is the daily schedule, right? Today's date. Now, here's, here's the rule. Fill these sheets out only on days you intend to be productive towards your goals. So if I'm on vacation, for instance, not like out of the country, I mean like here at home, but I'm shutting down because it's my birthday on the 1st. I'm, I don't intend, I don't intend to be in any way, shape, or form productive. Why? Because it's well, it's my birthday. I mean, it, 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 I'm just not have no intention of doing that. But how about today? I need to be productive today because I need to deliver a message to the team that if we all collectively increase our production in 2021, we all make more money. We all win. And so, yes, today is a very important day. Uh, and so, therefore, I start at seven brushing up the PowerPoint, making sure that lit text list is updated. I mean, and it's all part of what I'm showing you. So daily schedule just simply shows what you have. Now, this is also important because let's just say next Monday, uh, this coming Monday, it should be a working day for all of us. But if your daily schedule for the day shows like this blank, that's not a good thing. And so you got to also understand what is the problem? Troubleshoot your business. And a lot of the times you realize that we're just simply not putting in the work. And so fill this out. Now, people ask me for fillable PDFs, and the answer is we have that, but I don't use it and I don't give it because that's kind of a lazy way of just typing stuff into the actual schedule. There's great power when you commit a pen to paper. Your something wires differently, processes differently when you're doing this versus when you're doing this. And so it's important that if you, I'll give you an example. When I was at the police department, not only did I not want to have a very productive day every day, I couldn't as it related to my business because I was full-time police officer. But there were times when I left early, uh, early outs or whatever the case might be that I did need to be productive. And I was on most of those days. So the days you intend to be productive in your business, fill this out. Now, I don't want to hear it. And it doesn't matter about your private life. That's your life. And so don't use other people in other circumstances as an excuse for you not being uh, productive. You know, when I was in the military, my last base was out of Camp Pendleton, which is in San Diego. I had bought into a franchise, a cleaning franchise, which was a janitorial company, which I ended up being the employee, by the way. And so I used to drive from Camp Pendleton. When they let us out for the day, I would jump in my car and drive all the way up here to LA to clean offices and only to turn around around two, three in the morning head back to the base to be up at six with everybody else, uh, two and a half hours of sleep every day. And I did that for my last year because it meant that much to me. Well, everybody else thought it was just stupid or crazy uh, for doing that. And, you know, I learned a lot, didn't make a lot of money, worked very hard, but when you really, really want it, you'll do it. And when you don't, you won't. So daily schedule, daily priority list, because this is very important. A lot of the times we think that we're too busy to do something when we need to do something and then you put it on your priority list. So you can make sure that, again, whatever it is, not nowadays, because we're doing so much via Zoom and electronically, we can do a lot from home if we just simply can discipline ourselves to get stuff done. Daily priority list, the tasks list, different things that must be done that might not be related to the growing of your business, but the webinars, or maybe it's a team meeting or something that has a task that you need to do. Uh, renew your life insurance license. Don't let that pu puppy lapse. Uh, there's always tasks to do that doesn't have to be on one day, but just that you know of, this is the year that you have to do your continuing education, your CE. Well, put it on the list. And what does it do? And renew your license. Put it on the list. When does it do? And so on and so on and so on. Now we get into the fun part. Weekly planner, because again, like I told you earlier, for some Sunday is, you know, a religious day. They just don't do anything. Well, that, guess what? It's not here. 
uh, it might be a Monday, a Tuesday, a Saturday, Sabbath. Great. Cross out the days that you just simply cannot or will not work for whatever reason, but you'll end up with some days that are available for you to do something to move your business forward. And that's where you want to make sure you're not wasting time. The beauty about FFS and what I love about this business is you don't have to be grinding it from the morning to the nighttime, seven days a week. That's why we're here. We're working smarter, not necessarily harder, but that that needs to be done needs to be done well. And so therefore, it's very important for you to decide what days of the week are you going to be productive? When are you going to hold yourself accountable to? For me, I don't have a Sunday on my calendar because that's just family, God, and the other stuff that I got to do. And sometimes it falls during the week as well. Thursday, Chris, uh, New Year's Eve, well, it's out of the question. Friday was my birthday, great. But how about Saturday? How about Monday? How about Tuesday? How about Wednesday? Hold yourself accountable. And if need be, get yourself an accountability partner, which I cannot be, but get yourself an accountability partner, a downline, an upline, somebody that can push you and you can push them to make sure that there's a lot. And I do mean a lot we can do when we think there's not much to do. Uh, Weekly schedule, then you start to jot down exactly what it is that you're going to do on what days. And in our business, you don't need a continuation sheet with 50 things on it. It could be very simple and schedule, uh, uh, you know, the webinars for uh, wealth building for kids or a million dollar baby or whatever the case might be. We got people that are doing podcasts now. Well, when are you going to record the next episode or make it a habit of every Monday is podcast day or video day, whatever it is that you're doing, put it down on your schedule. Uh, and it just continues, right? As you can see, weekly planner, uh, priority, weekly plan, the same thing, which is how, what priority is this? goal or outcome, and the next action step. So for me, it's going to be to schedule my next Million Dollar Baby webinar. Uh, It's to get as many people on it. And the next one is to actually start inviting people to it or whatever the case might be. Monthly planner, it's just on a different format. Week one, two, three, four. Monthly task list, there's always stuff to do that needs to be done this month. So this is the month that we need to do, whether it be your new email list or whether it be your website or we talked about automating our business. Do you have your million dollar baby website going yet? Landing page. It's simple. One page. Do you have your rich cop, poor cop? Do you have your bulletproof for financial future one? Do you have your teacher presentation? There's a lot of people that are scheduling appointments that I'm seeing about 30% are not keeping their appointments. Can you just shoot them a text and say, hey, I know we couldn't meet together, but click on this on their phone now. Click here to view a short presentation. In six, seven minutes, you're talking to them about the importance of maximizing their pension, uh, the importance of knowing the CalSTRS pension amount, and of course, ending it with a link to schedule another follow-up appointment with you. Automate the whole thing, monthly schedule, and it just continues on and on and on. I like to start it here, yearly planner, because I wanna see, I want that 30,000 foot view looking down on 2021 as to what happens in December of 2021 and work my way back to January. Uh, A lot of the times, if you don't do that, you just get caught up in the month of January, which is a busy, weird month. And then February is another busy, weird month. And then March, and before you know it, you're stumbling through the whole damn uh, year and you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you get a clear view that time is limited. Once January is over, it's gone forever. So we have to achieve certain goals in the month of January, even if it means tracking down our activity, which I'll show you one way to do that, and so on, and so on, and so on. So this is the yearly planner that I work with because I need to know how I intend to end the year and then work myself back. Yearly goals. What is it that has to happen for you in January? Anybody, I'm opening it up to uh, you guys right now. So if this is your planner for January, what has to happen in January? Anybody? Anybody? You have nothing to achieve in January. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Hey, yeah. I'm here. Uh, I know for one of the things that we've already been planning on is to increase our virtual uh, appointment count and the goal is to get to 15 per week. Okay. Okay. So perfect. I mean, here we have to have January 60 appointments in the month of January. Simple. Yes. Very simple. And then what's even more powerful than the simple is if you and your teammates are on the same sheet. Now you can have multiple of these yearly goals. Right? you? You guys, I don't have to tell you, my personal passion is to travel, travel with my family. Guess what? I have one just for travel, but I also have one just for the team. I also have just one personal production for personal recruiting, for personal points and so on. So you're right. January, 60 virtual appointments. Man, you knock that puppy out or get even close to it. I cannot even imagine what February is going to look like. And it has a way of building up from there as well. Thank you. I appreciate that, George. 
Uh, anybody else? What has to happen? That's a great one. 60 virtual appointments in the month of January. Perfect. The clock is running. Anybody else? Please. Um, well, you got to catch up with everybody. Up trial here. version. I'm way behind. Okay. And now we're looking for what, what's missing, which is fine, but we're, we're looking for something specific, right? Something tangible, something we can count. Uh, and so that might be, or you should throw a number to that. So what does that mean? Well, that means that you need to have five pieces of business during the month of January. And I'm just throwing that out there, Vern. I'm not saying that's the number for you, but I mean, uh, so we need a specific number. Who else? Something specific. What, what has to happen in January? I'm actually, I'm working on uh, getting, uh, doing two workshops virtually this month. Oh, cool. One, One's going to be a pension workshop where I'm going to invite my uh, current teachers and have them invite some of their colleagues. And then the other one is going to be um, a self-help workshop through my coaching program. Perfect. Outstanding. Great job. Somebody else. There was somebody else. Yes. Um, establish my online presence. Um, one, getting my first landing page completed by the 15th of January. Perfect. That's what I was waiting to hear. Also, that's a very big one. You have to have your online presence that works even when you're not working. So absolutely. And, and remember, you don't have to start with everything, but what matters the most to you? What you know gets you excited? What do you feel the most comfortable with? Maybe just start. If you just simply did nothing but say, I want my million dollar baby website to be up and running. And it's just a web page, by the way, one page, no website, one page, your landing page. So if you were to say, I want my million dollar baby campaign web uh, landing page to be up by January, that's a big deal. Let me tell you why. Because if you're able to do that, and then you turn around and say, you know what? In February, my sole purpose in life during the month of February is to have my teacher care, uh, uh, my teacher website, my video, or whatever it might be, the landing page for police or whatever. Before you know it, in three to four months, you're going to have a full online presence. And I do mean a full online presence at that point. And so that's the power of it, whether it be virtual appointments, whether it be your online presence. There has to be something. And here's a phrase that I'm going to emphasize that if you can embody the following, you're going to do really good. And that is, can you work and develop a sense of urgency? Can you do that? Work with the, don't be like, I always have February and then, well, you know, we still have March and now, you know, we're still not even halfway through the year. Bull, you have to, that if you miss that one simple thing that must happen in January, you should be beating yourself up so hard that it's not even funny. Where in February, you better knock that out along with February's goal. So how do you prevent that from happening? Where you're just kicking the can down the road? Very simple. You fill out the entire year. So there's no room for January's online presence or January's 60 virtual appointments to not get completed because your mind will trick you. Remember, we are very, very good at fooling ourselves. And so what I'm going to do is say, well, I didn't hit it, but guess what? There's an open space in February. We'll try again then. Bull. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do that. Work with the sense of urgency that if I see my goal for January is not completed by the 15th of January, I'm in panic mode. I'm in full-blown panic mode because no, 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 that cannot happen. Tell me one good reason why it didn't happen the first half. What the hell makes you think it's going to happen the second half? And so you better move with the sense of urgency. So thank you for all of you that are participating. I really, really appreciate that. Anybody, last call for something that has to happen in January. Anybody? I know this probably falls in line with mostly a, a, a daily goal, those donations. And, okay. You know, what, uh, I mean, hey. just so you know, don't, donating, giving, helping others is part of what nurtures the soul like nothing else. And I want to take a moment, and I know he probably doesn't want me to do this, but I'll do it anyways. Uh, I just want to thank George. He shared with me a, a checklist or a wish list, I should say. I guess it came from a principal or somebody <clears throat> regarding families that are having a very hard financial time. And, you know, nobody was asking for Xboxes or stuff like that. They were just asking for uh, laundry detergent. Uh, we're talking about, you know, detergent to wash your clothes. We're talking about five pounds of rice. And so that's you know, something Marcel and I could get behind and we did get behind it all the way because it's as humble as humbling as you can be having two, three kid diapers. And yeah. so what I'm saying is I just wanted to thank George and all of you that are out there doing good things. I just don't know about them. So my recommendation is not about bragging. It has nothing to do with that, but it does have a lot to do with inspiring other people. Because if we picked up, uh, I think it was, how many families was that, George, that you picked up? Uh, it, it was just uh, through one of my clients, it was five, uh, which we're going to do just a door doorstep drop-off today. 
on there. Okay. And then a couple of weeks back before Christmas, it was just a one client's friend who was just going through a lot of medical issues, grandmother, and all she wanted was just to be able to give something to her grandchildren. Sure. So start with that. It, and the reason that I say that is because between just those of us that are on this webinar right now, right now, we could fill every requirement for a hundred families. And so again, I'm not bragging on behalf of George, or even though I do commend him <clears throat> and I thank him for it. I'm saying there's a lot we can do. And so make sure, don't cheat yourself out of the feeling that you'll get when you help somebody. So have one of these yearly goals. Like I told you, you can print 10 of these things. Yearly goals for February, one is to help. Donate <clears throat> your time, your money, whatever the case might be to be able to do just that. Another one is FFS production. Another one is with your spouse. Another one, I mean, and so on and so on and so on. I've learned the importance of that. That's why I have so many of these sheets because magic happens, like I said, when you put pen to paper, it goes into a different part of the brain, if you would, than anything else. And it's something that will help you. And I do mean help you move forward faster in other aspects of your life as well. So, all right, thank you so much for that. And then here's your year at a glance, things that must happen. And this is on a yearly basis, your yearly priorities and so on. My simplest one for myself, because I know if I help enough people do this, my income will go up as well, is to dramatically inc increase my income. And I'm not gonna be reporting to you, uh, you know, my income this week and next month or, no, I'll let the company do that. Because if you do the right thing, you know, the company will call you. The company, I was very happy this year to qualify for the elite. Uh, very only, I think only five people in the entire company were able to qualify for the elite portion of the dream destination trip which is first class airfare. And if there's ever a time to go first class is when you're going all the way to Europe, trust me, because you're sitting there for 12 hours on that plane. Um, and so I'm very proud of that. Let the company do the bragging for you if you if, if you would, because they'll tell everybody. Uh, and when you qualify for your Champions Club, additional diamonds, for dream destination, and all that other good stuff, you don't have to go out there and toot your own horn. I'm not saying that at all. But uh, make sure you, again, have everything in order just the way you see it right there. And so goal areas, different things are your home, finance, relationships, health, fitness, study. You got to know a lot more by the end of 2021 that you knew at the beginning of the year. And at the same time, you have to make sure you hit all the areas. And it's not the easiest thing, but after a while, it just becomes second nature. So like I said, for me, it's about the team. It's about appreciating the leadership. It's about appreciating everybody. It's about appreciating my wife. It's about you know appreciating my grandkids. I mean, it, it's, it's like you, you might sound it's overwhelming, but it's not. It's just nowadays we have technology. For God's sakes, I'm on a webinar with you getting my mom her breakfast uh, on Uber Eats at the same time. I didn't have to cancel the webinar. I didn't have to tell her, no, mom, you, this is a bad time for you to eat. You got to wait until noon when I'm done with all my webinar. I mean, I got to do that. So leverage the technology before you. And it's amazing how much more you will do, how much more you can accomplish, and most importantly, how much more fulfilled you will be. So my recommendation as it relates to the page you see before you, playing your goals, the goal, the strategy, that's pretty cool. For me, the theme for this year is the, the, the theme for 2021 is going to be that this is the year of the leap, the big leap. 2020 was a good year because it was a little better than 2019, but we don't survive getting a little better the cost of living, the cost of housing, you know, the, what the average house price went up. I mean, so no, we cannot do that in 2021. We were all holding our breath. We thought it would be over maybe by the summer, maybe be over by the fall. Maybe this whole COVID is going to be over. We just know that hey, at this point, don't plan on it. I know schools are going to be shut. They said they want to reopen in the spring. I guarantee you they're going to open and close it in about a week when the first COVID case pops up. So keep plugging away with your virtual appointments, opening strategies, and so on to make sure that you are successful as well. Habit tracker, very, very simple. The question is, what? I'll give you an example, and this is more about the lifestyle, healthy lifestyle. One of the best things you can do for your body, as you know, is to simply go out there and drink more waters. This is something so simple. So under, at the top where it says habit, just put water, drink water. And every time you drink a glass of water, check off. If you, if you have one of those big old jugs, then maybe you want to check off four because that's how much water fits in those things. Or if you're emailing, if you're inviting people, if you're sending the links to your webinars, the links to your landing page. I mean, you can put a lot of different habits here because for at the end of the day, most people don't intend to have a, 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 a non-productive week or non-productive month or non-productive year. It just happens. 
And it doesn't happen. It's just that what didn't happen, this made that be the case. And so therefore, it's very important for you to just invite people to your website, email them the link, text them the link, whatever, email the uh, schools, principals. I mean, we've shown you how to do everything you need to do. Whether you learned it or not, that's your business, your problem, not mine. But everything has been taught. And then some. And we got a couple of surprises that I cannot. I'm waiting for my overseas IT people to get back to me. I wanted to roll it out today. But I have a special gift for everybody coming real, real quick. Um, you got to be on the webinar, of course. I think hopefully by next Saturday we'll do it. But it's really cool. You don't want to miss it. It'll turbocharge your, uh, your business. So, again, what track, uh, what habit do you need to track? Is it emailing people? Is it opening your mouth, meaning talking to people? A lot of people don't know that you're in this business. You have friends that have kids, family members that have kids. You have kids. But yet you haven't even told anybody about the Million Dollar Baby. Everybody knows a cop here or there. Tell them about how to bulletproof their financial future. Or for teachers, do their retirement plan. Is it Does it make the grade? Yes or no? Uh, for firefighters, how to fireproof your financial future. I mean, it's just the habits that determine the outcome. And there's just simply notes, grid, and so on. Expenses, if you're tracking that. Bills, if you want to do that for your household. Or most importantly, for your marketing expenses. Make sure you do that. Some of you are spending money or you're doing your podcast, emailing. Track your expenses, 100% tax deductible. Make sure you do that. And income tracker. That's my favorite. As it relates to FFS, to make sure that you're on track where it's growing year over year and so on, just like any other business. Well, that's the end of that. You're going to be able to go to FFSlinks.com. And that FFSlinks.com, you'll be able to download the PDF version of the planner I just shared with you. It's super flexible. Print as much as you want, as many of the pages that you need to make sure everything works out okay for you in 2021. And I just want to take a, a moment on behalf. Oh, let me just go questions. Okay. If you're texting the questions, give me a second because I'm not pulling those up. Okay. Hold on. All right. You're chatting away. Oh, happy birthday. Thank you. Gary, thank you. Kim, thank you. Hey, okay. Opa, thank you. Omar, well, thank you everybody for the uh, birthday wishes. I appreciate that. Getting old, I'm going from medium brown to the jet black, just for men hair color now, because the damn hair just growing white now. So, uh, and plus I'm showing off my Marcella backyard haircut because the damn barbershop is still shut. So I had to submit to Marcella's skills. But anyways, uh, I just want to say thank you for all that you do. I'm telling you, I feel it in my soul that 2021 is going to be our best year yet. And I would hate for you to miss out on it. So please take this seriously. Do some soul searching. What is it that floats your boat, floats your soul? What is it that fulfills you? And whatever that might be, commit yourself to it, to making sure that whatever vehicle you choose, in this example, FFS, can get you from where you are to where you deserve to be on December 31st of 2021. Last call for questions, comments, concerns before we wrap it up. Anybody, any questions, comments, concerns? If not, let me just go ahead and go back over here. If anyone has any questions, please go ahead and unmute yourself while I try to exit this bad boy. Well, I just want to say thank you once again for all that you do. Let's go out there and make this a great year, a productive week, and most importantly, uh, a productive month by sitting down, sitting down and putting that pen to paper, identifying our goals, and then hitting them. Because on the first webinar of February, we're going to do nothing but recap January as to what is it that you achieved. And you're going to have to answer this. What did you achieve in January considering you had a whole month. So if you say, hey, I had one piece of business, that's all I achieved, that's good. But if we did one, we could have probably done two considering we have a whole month of January. Calls, uh, last call, question, comments, concerns. If not, thank you so much. Let's go out there and make it a great week and be safe. And above all, please stay healthy. Thank you.